The new year has begun and it's almost time for me to get started playing games this year, but not before telling you all what I ended the last month of the year with. December mostly saw me spend time with the charismatic protagonist of a certain beloved JRPG series, and I also put some extra time into a JRPG favorite that made for a month that reminded me of many of the things that I love about JRPGs. It was a good month to end the year on and has me excited to start playing in this one, so before I get to it, here are the JRPGs I played in December. My main plan for December was to play Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, and I was able to finish it by the end of the month with some time to spare thanks to it being a slightly shorter game. This wasn't without getting really into it though, as I still think about how intense and beautifully done its ending was that has Zack Fair now feeling like a significant character to me in the Final Fantasy VII universe, all thanks to how good Crisis Core was at conveying his story and each of its 10 memorable chapters. My experience was also often comparing it a little to its original PSP version as I remembered I had it sitting on my shelf and dug up my PSP to let me fully appreciate the better graphics and gameplay on PS5, which that experience really did. I actually still think Crisis Core is enjoyable on PSP, however, it felt a lot brighter and more enjoyable in every way playing on TV and with a modern console with a reunion version, both for the modern visual style and for the fact it's away from the PSP screen that doesn't handle the darker areas of Midgar so well when dealing with glare, and so for this and every other reason like it running better and other things I mentioned in my review, the existence of this reunion version is fantastic as it makes this PSP game feel much better and more modern, but still with all of its charm that makes it a great game. I haven't jumped back into reunion in a big way since finishing, although I did play it one morning as it felt like it was just staring at me before work one day, so I played a mission that didn't take too long, and that will have me keeping it in mind as it's not a bad thing to do if I have a free minute. There are a couple of other things I like to do in it, like the perfume making mini game I missed, but I may also just move on to newer things and and save the rest for when I have a chance to put a good chunk of time into it. In any case, it's well deserving of being my JRPG of the month for December, as the overall experience really did hit me, and now after playing and seeing some trailers for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I'm excited to continue in this universe as their high quality worlds are really getting me into this classic Final Fantasy story in a good way. In the last JRPGs I played video, I touched very briefly on my day playing Adventure Academia in December that was a lot of fun. I still need to go back to play it more as I found out while making my impressions that one of my favorite voice actors, Aina Aiba, is in it, but the day I had with it was good fun letting me get to know its different kind of tactical gameplay. That day in December was all the extra JRPG time I expected to have last month, but since making shorts I've recently changed my creative process for YouTube a little that means I'm actually pre-writing things less and creating more things as I go. This has freed up some of my time, specifically the time I used to write on the train where I had the great realization that it meant I could play more with my Switch, and on my last few days of work for the year, I was happily bringing Persona 5 Royal with me that is so far making for a great and nostalgic Persona experience. The way I got into the Persona series was by playing Persona 4 Golden on Vita whenever and wherever I could, and apparently playing Persona that way still feels nice to me as being able to play 5 anywhere now that it's on Switch is a way of playing Persona 5 that makes me feel so comfy every time I play. It also helps with my main criticism of 5, with that is long cutscenes make it hard to save, so with being able to just put my Switch on sleep and sort that out on my lunch break or when I get home is a luxury, and has reminded me of how good portable gaming can be as it's nice to jump in and out of during the day. I may end up putting it down soon, as I might want to prep for January's releases by playing their related games, but I am glad I was able to spend more time with 5, as I do get kind of annoyed with myself when I buy a game, play it for a short time, first impression it and then put it down even though I want to play more, and while time is also to blame, I want to at least be better with my side of things by picking things up and playing them more when I get the urge throughout the year. Hopefully you'll see me do this in JRPGs I played over the rest of the year, as I am hoping to spend whatever free gaming time I get with things like this that are sitting in my backlog just waiting to be tried, but for this month I'm glad I played Persona 5 and Adventure Academia as they added some good extra spice to what was already a good month of games to end the year with.
The first month of 2023 has already begun, and there's plenty to start the JRPG year off with a bang, but for me, there's only two things that I'm truly interested in this January that have me excited for the month to get underway. Fire Emblem Engage is the game I'm probably most excited for, especially since I really enjoyed the latest arc in the series in all its forms. I've also been saving to be able to afford the expansion pass when it comes out to enjoy having everyone's favorite house leaders in it too, and I'm also keen to keep learning about its new characters that I've been trying to keep a surprise. Prize. Since I like their designs, I'm definitely excited to explore a new Fire Emblem universe and to have a lot of fun with this unique new entry in the series. I'm also hoping to have fun with the re-releases of Persona 3 and 4 on Switch that will add to the apparent workout my favorite portable is going to get this month. I don't know if I'll necessarily finish them in full in January, but since I've been enjoying Persona 5 portably, it'll be nice to have these games all together on one system, and with quality of life features apparently to look forward to, I hope it'll be a definitive definitive way to play these games. These are the main things I'm planning to play, but it's not without a few smaller experiences in mind. While I've pretty much accepted I'll miss Neptunia's Sisters vs. Sisters that comes out on the 24th, and the cute looking Stranger in Paradise's Moogle DLC that comes out on the 27th, the demo for One Piece's RPG is something I might give a try to see what it's all about. I'm also considering giving the Nier Automata anime a look too, as surely I can fit that into a week, and this is alongside anything I decide to play before Fire Emblem Engage's release on the 20th, and I'm currently considering playing the first Fire Emblem that I picked up digitally on Switch ages ago, or playing more Three Houses or Three Hopes to try and finish the extra things I wanted to do in those games. In any case, between new releases and the backlog, there are definitely lots of fun things to play, and I'm already excited to see where the experiences in this JRPG year will take me. I hope you're all having fun with what you're currently playing, and are excited to play new things too, as we start to get into another exciting year of JRPG. RPGs to play. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what you played last month and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!